and welcome back Wolfpack. Today's lesson is a continuation of our quadrilaterals. We're going to be learning specifically about the properties and conditions of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares. And today you will be able to use the properties of rectangles, rhombuses, and squares to solve problems. So let's get started. First of all, let's recap what a parallelogram is. A parallelogram is a special type of quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. So if it's a parallelogram, then a few things about it are true. If it's a parallelogram, then we know that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. We know that consecutive angles are supplementary. We add up to 180. Both pairs of opposite sides are also congruent. We know that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, and both diagonals bisect each other. So those are the five things that we know to be true about parallelograms. If it's a parallelogram, then all five of those things are true. So today we're going to talk about three special types of parallelograms. So they are already parallelograms, so all five of these things apply, but then they have additional uh, properties. Okay, so underneath, you see that it's already filled in because it's a lot of writing, and I suggest that you pause it and take a moment to write it all down. But the first thing is if it's a rectangle, all those things apply, plus all the angles are congruent, and their diagonals are congruent. And you can see that those same things are true for a square. All the angles are congruent because they're all 90 degrees. As you can see, 90, 90, 90, 90. 90, 90, 90, 90, and their diagonals are congruent, meaning when I draw a diagonal from here to here, obviously that's not perfectly straight, and then from A to C, the actual diagonals are congruent. AC is congruent to BD, okay? That's an means by the diagonals being congruent, and the same for the square, okay? So those two things apply to rectangles and squares because a square is a special type of rectangle. So then for rhombuses, a rhombus has all sides are congruent. As you can see, all the sides are congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular, which means they form right angles. And the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. What does that word bisect mean? It means to cut in half. Okay? So when we have these diagonals. Okay. These diagonals form 90 degree angles. Okay. That's what that means, diagonals are perpendicular. And then the, di the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. It means it cuts each angle in half. So this angle is now congruent to that angle. Okay? So you can see that a rhombus has its own three special properties. And then we move on to the square again which has those same three properties of a rhombus. So a square is special because it has the two rectangle properties and the three rhombus properties. All sides are congruent, their diagonals are also perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. And I'm sorry, that's kind of going off the side a little bit. It was a lot of information, okay? But as you can see, the rectangle has two properties that uh, make it a rectangle besides the regular parallelogram properties. A rhombus has three properties, and then the square has the rectangle and the rhombus properties, which you can see because we color coded them blue and green. So note down here, squares are also rhombuses and rectangles, but a rhombus is not a square. Okay, so you you can say if you see a rect if you see a square, you can call it a rectangle. But if you see a rectangle, you cannot call it a square. Um, so a square, as you can see, it has all of the rectangle properties and it has all of the rhombus properties. So a square is a rectangle and a square is a rhombus, but the opposite is not true. So I want you to take a moment and try to fill out the, this box the best that you can. Okay? Put an X in each box that is a property of that parallelogram. And you can refer back to those properties that we just filled in at the top. Okay, example number two. Let's do a couple of problems. For any rectangle, FGHG, 
Decide whether the statement was always or sometimes true. Draw a diagram and explain your reasoning. So the first thing we need to do is draw the diagram of the rectangle. Okay. We need to name it. doesn't matter where you start. I always start the left-hand corner. However, you do have to go in a circle. So F, G, H, and J. So there we know that a rectangle has all 90-degree angles. So they're saying that angle G is congruent to angle H. Is that always true or sometimes true? Well, the answer is it's always true. And why is that? Because rectangles, all the angles in a rectangle are congruent to each other. So you would say it's always true because all angles in a rectangle are congruent. Okay? So it's always true because all our angles in a rectangle are congruent. So we're going to do the same thing again. Draw your rectangle and name it. And look at F, G, H, J. And it said JF is congruent to FG. Now, we know that that is not true because in a rectangle, the opposite sides are congruent. Okay? Because that's the property of a, parallel, of a parallelogram that opposite sides are congruent. And in a rectangle, we know that it does not have all four sides. So sometimes it can be true because if it's a square, it can be true because technically squares, like I said earlier, okay? Squares are a special type of rectangle. So it can be true, but it's not always true. So you would write sometimes. And why sometimes? It's always sometimes if it's a square. So sometimes if the rectangle is also a square. Is that for example two? Example three, doing the same thing with a rhombus. So take a moment and actually try to do that. Uh, at least draw, sketch out the rhombus, and then see if you can decide whether it's always true or sometimes true, and go from there. On the back side, classify the parallelogram. We have to. Say, we already know it's a parallelogram, so we have to say what kind of parallelogram it is. So, first of all, I see that, um, I know it's a parallelogram, the diagonals are bisecting each other, so this diagonal is cut in half, and this diagonal is cut in half. What I do notice is that the diagonals are perpendicular, okay? The diagonals are perpendicular, because I can see that they gave me a 90 degree angle. So, if you look back at your chart, what type of parallelogram has perpendicular diagonals? Well, it says it's a rhombus or a square, a rhombus or a square, okay? Now, this particular shape, we know that squares also have to have 90 degree angles. So since we do not see any 90 degree angles, okay, so there's no 90 degree angles marked, then we would have to say that this is a rhombus. Next up, looking at the next one, um, we know that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. But what we have, what we have here, and actually let me take it back to the pit up head. So in a parallelogram, we already know the opposite sides are congruent. So this side is congruent to that side, and that side is congruent to that side. Well, what I see now is that all the sides are congruent. Okay, so that means it either has to be a rhombus or a square. And then they already gave us that this is a 90 degree angle. Well, we know that consecutive angles are supplementary in parallelograms. That's a parallelogram property. So that means that has to be 90, and that has to be 90, and that has to be 90. So we have all congruent sides and all right angles. So this one is a square. Okay. And lastly, we know since it's already parallelogram that opposite sides are congruent. Right? 
but not all four sides here, but the opposite sides are, and the same property for a square, we have one right angle, well we know that consecutive angles are supplementary, so they all have to be right angles. And so what shape, what parallelogram has four right angles and opposite sides congruent? That would be a rectangle. So example five is the same thing again. I'd like to see you try to classify those three. And then lastly, H, I, J, um, sorry, example five. Go ahead and solve, explain your reasoning and find X and Y. And then example six, the same thing. And we will do examples five and six in class. Okay? But I'd really love to see you try to do the try it on your own. See if you can get that filled in. Have a great day, Wolfpack. See you next time.